Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Astronomer Live. Um, and continuing kind of the recent trend of having some special guests on to the show, uh, we have my very good friend and colleague, Utkar Sharma, um, who is here to talk to you about DAG serialization. Um, so I will get out of the way and let him give his presentation. He's supposed to give this at Airflow Summit, but he wasn't able to. So I really wanted to get him on the show so we could give this really cool talk um, that really just helps anyone understand what's going on under the hood in Airflow. Uh, I feel like a lot of times people think it's a black box, but Utkarsh is going to try to expose the inner workings um, and you know make it seem a little bit clearer, a little bit uh, easier to understand so that you, know, you maybe get inspired to become an open source contributor like him. And also Utkarsh just became an open source contributor as well. So we're going to give him a big round of applause for that. Um, that's enough out of me. Utkarsh, take it away, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, like uh, George mentioned, you know, I was uh, unfortunately not able to give this presentation in uh, Airflow Summit. So yeah, here's my second chance, I hope, uh, to, you know, do a justice to that. So, uh, so basically, okay, so a little background about this. Uh, uh, so when it comes to Airflow and it's an OSS so open source software, right? So generally people in an, if you go into any organization, you are expected to work on certain projects. So you generally get a sort of nice guide, uh, at least a technical overview of the project, and then you're expected to work around it. But when it comes to OSS, uh, that's that's not the case because it's literally distributed and you don't, you know, you usually find folks to actually explain you the bit. So that's the same problem that I dealt with. And I thought of it, if it affects someone else, it might this something like this would be beneficial for folks. Uh, so my aim is to just to give you an overview of how Airflow works under the hood. And there are two parts to it. I'm just covering first part right now, which is basically what happens uh, when you start Airflow, when you have when you write a DAG file, start an Airflow and till the point it's serialized. And the second part covers uh, basically what happens when the serialization is done. You have a DAG in uh, Airflow Meta database and then how it gets scheduled and the different tasks gets executed, right? So uh, let's start with the first part. So the first part, basically, and if anyone has used Airflow, right, you have uh, you generally start certain processes around it. So one of the one of the processes, basically, the scheduler. I think it's the most important part of the whole Airflow ecosystem. So that's scheduler. So, but scheduler uh, scheduler is generally responsible for you know uh, multiple things. Out of, of like a couple of major things that we're gonna cover today is basically the uh, the basically the DAG serialization part of it and how scheduler go, how scheduler actually serialize and utilizes those serialized DAGs to uh, run run the task, right? So uh, if anyone starts scheduler, it generally starts with a command, which is airflow scheduler. And what happens is basically in background, it uh, when it comes to serialization, of course it does multiple things, but uh, when it comes to serialization, it starts some process, something that's called as DAC file processor agent, right? And uh, as you can see, uh, this is actually conditional. Someone who uh, wants to run multiple uh, DAC processors, they can also do that, right? And how you go about doing that is basically, you set up this uh, configuration or an environment variable, which is Airflow scheduler standalone DAC processor. So if this uh, argument is true, the scheduler won't start its own DAC processor and you're free to do that, right? So, uh, so yeah, so that's what happens. So once someone runs scheduler, uh, it also, depending upon the variable, of course, it starts its own DAC file process, something called as DAC file processor agent. And uh, what happens is uh, DAC file processor agent is, you know, responsible for spawning other bunch of processes, which actually does the, uh, does the heavy lifting of serial, of reading multiple files from a DAC, uh, DAC folder and then, you know, serializing it. But before that, uh, so if someone doesn't want to uh, start a DAC processor, they can simply do it with another command, which is Airflow DAC processor. So this will uh, start your own DAC process. And this would be a separate process, right? right? So as you can see, there is two different processes here. And why someone would do that? Well, uh, you might have multiple DACs, right? So uh, you have, depending upon the number of DAGs you want to pass or number of files you want to pass, it's sometimes it's better to have multiple DAG processors so that you can 
you know, uh, you can ensure that the every every file that is there is getting passed at certain within that certain threshold. So depending upon that, you might have that requirement. Um, also, one more important thing is so, you know, uh, if you if you start with if you start a DAC processor within scheduler, uh, basically since it's it's spawning a new process, it actually opens up uh, OS pipe or you know multi processing pipes to actually communicate with that new process, which is uh, which is a different uh, process here, right? Process uh, two. Uh, so this is process one. So I'm talking about this particular flow here. So you have process one and then you have process two. So if it is, uh, if that airflow uh, spawns a new process, we communicate uh, different messages. I'll come to the different messages that gets communicated across, but in general, it just starts a new pipe and basically that is responsible for com different communication, right? And however, if you have not done that, with airflows, uh, like if you have chosen to uh, uh, start your own DAC processor, that would happen as uh, since, oh, sorry, yeah. If you have chosen to start your DAC processor separately, since uh, scheduler has no knowledge about this process, so it doesn't, it cannot open that pipe, right? So the way it does that communication is through database. Now, airflow uh, metadata base is the central point when it comes to communication across multiple components, right? So even if you deploy that on high scale, that is something that still uh, is single point of contact for every other component, right? So, okay, yeah. So basically, so if in in, in scenarios where the DAC process is a separate process, the way you would communicate is pass basically messages in, uh, basically write different rows in a table called callback request. And this table actually holds all the, uh, all the, all the different signals and messages there. And that's, and then it's responsible, it's responsibility of different DAC file processes to actually go about and read those uh, tables and, you know, simply execute those messages. Now, uh, when it comes to message itself, so you have different sort of uh, different messages. Some of them are signals where you can just, you know, just sort of a flag and uh, DAC processor knows what to do. So those things are terminate managers. So if you want to like, there is a scenario where you want to gracefully terminate the manager. That's where uh, you can just simply a, a scheduler would simply pass a terminate ma a manager message and it will just uh, terminate that, right? How how that happens? I'll just come in a bit, like how it interprets those different messages as well as callbacks request. So I'll just come to that in a bit. But uh, yeah, and the second thing is end manager. So there is a, like if it doesn't happen gracefully, you can just simply it it force shut shuts it. Uh, agent run once. This is some something I'm not entirely sure about, but this is one of the messages uh, that a scheduler can pass, right? And then you have different callbacks. So uh, I think we have all used uh, generally. We have all used you know uh, email callbacks, right? What happens when a task fails? What happens when a task succeeds? So you all have callbacks messages while you write different tasks, right? SLA uh, callbacks as well. So those those sort of things are also communicated by scheduler to different DAC processes, right? And that can happen, uh, of course, by the two options we have, Q, which basically stores all the all the different callbacks that we have, right? Uh, third thing is it just gets the DAC file. I mean, uh, so once you have a DAC file, right? Uh, to ensure that it it contains a DAC, there is a bunch of thing that happens, right? For Airflow at this point of time, it is just a file. It can be any, it can contain anything. So there are a bunch of filters to that. Uh, first thing that we use is basically Airflow ignore. We can specify an Airflow ignore file, which will actually, uh, which will actually make sure that any file that you want to ignore as a user is specified there, and you can just you know simply ignore that file. Uh, other thing is, of course, since it's a DAC file, it needs to be a Python file. So we look for the extension part of it. Uh, third thing is a zip file. So I actually didn't know about this. Uh, you can actually specify multiple zipped files in DAC folder and that and Airflow will actually unzip it, try to look uh, for different uh, Python files within that and interpret all the DACs if uh, they're they there, right? So this is another, uh, Another thing that I actually don't know who would use it, but it's there in the code. Um, uh, another interesting thing is heuristics, right? So if you if you think about loading, if you have thousands of files, right? 
and it will just load all the files and all and they obviously qualify all the other parameters that we just discussed so the way you would test that is basically load that file in memory uh and then try to figure out if uh, uh sorry, load that file as a Python module and then try to figure out if it has DAG folders or Airflow, uh, Airflow objects, sorry, Airflow objects and Air, uh, uh, DAG objects. And that would be a time consuming thing. So what we do here is we use something called as heuristics. And this is another thing. So, so the way you check it is basically you look for a string within that file, which contains either DAG or Airflow. And surprisingly, if you don't have that, right, it would actually lead to your file not getting parsed in Airflow. So surprising people have, people have, uh, when trying to write their own, uh, uh, what do you say, own code generators for DAGs, they have actually sometimes tripped upon this uh, thing. So to solve that, what we, uh, what was done, I think was to introduce another parameter, which another configuration, which is Airflow core might contain DAG callable. So there is a default callable, which actually checks for the DAG or Airflow, and uh, when those parameters are not there, right, uh, it will simply trip. But you can override this behavior with this configuration. So you can just simply specify your own uh, own function, which actually does the checking, or simply bypass it. But that you have a risk of you know having too much load time there. Uh, and the last thing that happens is basically once all the things are loaded. It file and look for the DAG object in each space. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So we, we first of all, execute all the callbacks, right? We parse, uh, we execute all the callbacks that we receive from this callback request list. Uh, and then we serialize those DAGs. So when I, when we serialize, we actually populate bunch of other tape, bunch of tables, which is again, air from metadata database. And uh, you have import error, you have DAG, uh, table and you have DAG, DAG, DAG pickle, depending upon, you know, uh, and there is also da data set tables, depending upon whether your, uh, whether your DAG actually outputs some of the data sets as an outlets, you would actually go about and populate that as well. And once, uh, and okay. So another, like, this is, this is just the one way flow of it, right? When you say, uh, a certain file was added, but what happens when a certain file was removed uh, from a folder, that folder, right? So this whole process would go, uh, would actually go about and syncing your Airflow metric database, marking those DAGs, which was earlier added as stale. So this process keeps on happening. Uh, this whole process of serializing a certain DAG in Airflow metric database, this keeps on happening. So you either mark, uh, add some DAGs, update DAGs, and also at the same time, still mark them still and uh, remove them from metadata database. So yeah, that's, that's bunch, uh, that's, that's a couple of, uh, uh, yeah, those are the things that actually happens during the serialization of DAG. Uh, yeah, I think that that's, that's about it. Awesome. I mean, that, that was that thing more than enough. That was really, really cool. Like, gosh, I, I, I really did not know kind of that so much relies on the, uh, the meta database there. So thank okay. you for taking us through all that. Um, and then now let me turn off the recording.